Second, I will focus on the proactive role that telecoms can play in disaster risk reduction and management. Our basic task as a telecoms company is to stay on air and online in good times and bad. More so, in fact, during bad times. That's the biggest value add we can provide during calamities. But that can be pretty tough to do during disasters like the earthquake in Bohol and Cebu in August 2013. Or after a super typhoon like Haiyan or Yolanda in Eastern Visayas. For purposes of this discussion, let's focus on Yolanda. What was the impact of that record-breaking storm on our network? About 1,500 sites and nodes in the central part of the country were affected, mostly due to damage to our transmission lines and the widespread loss of commercial power. We submitted this slide as part of a report to the National Tele Telecommunications Commission two days after the storm. It shows the status of our network province by province at that time. The affected area covers 16 provinces and 402 municipalities. You can see where the biggest problems were. These were the provinces shown in orange, specifically Leyte and Samar, where our coverage reached only between 25 to 50 percent of the towns in the province. This next slide shows the situation on December 8, exactly one month after Yolanda made landfall. As you can see, the affected areas are all green, meaning we achieved full restoration in a month's time. What lessons did we learn from Yolanda and the other calamities of 2013? There were many. Let me focus on the more important ones. First, we need to fortify our network. This requires many systemic design changes. After seeing how our aerial fiber cables were turned into spaghetti, we are buying as much or burying as much fiber optic cables as we can. We are redesigning our base stations to make them more flood resilient. This photo shows an elevated reinforced equipment van that can better survive storm surges. Yolanda made landfall with 900, uh, 315 kilometers per hour winds, and this is forcing a rethink of cell site building standards all over the country. Second, we need to maximize the use of backup technologies like satellite systems. This is necessary because land-based facilities can be wiped out by storm surges or devastated by earthquakes. I am talking here of handheld satellite phones like the Turaya handsets that proved so helpful in restoring disrupted communications. I am also referring to VSAT base stations like those deployed by our partners from Vodafone Foundation and Telecoms Sans Frontieres to restore cellular service in isolated areas of Leyte and Samar. What's more, we are deploying a digital radio system as a backup communication system. We are also looking into innovative power solutions because disasters can knock out commercial power for long periods of time, and this poses a huge problem for running our own networks. Third, we are strengthening our organization with better planning, training, and equipment. For example, our first responders need to be trained on how to recognize and deal with trauma, not only among their ranks, but also among the people in the disaster area. With these and other measures in place, we hope that our network and organization will be more resilient and bounce back quicker from powerful shocks. In part two of my presentation, let's take a look at how simple but innovative telecoms services can be used to help make communities more resilient. Let me just focus on two types of services. 
The first is our web-based SMS service called InfoBoard. This service uses a website to rapidly send text message alerts to white-listed cell phones. It can also receive and re record text messages from cell phones in its database. InfoBoard has been successfully used by the Albay provincial government for the past seven years to inform and mobilize its disaster response personnel in various emergencies. It also uses the service to gather feedback from people regarding the situation in the field. The systematic use of InfoBoard has helped Albay develop one of the best provincial disaster preparedness programs in the country. InfoBoard has also been effectively used by the province of Southern Leyte since 2011 to alert communities to various hazards regarding or ranging from storm surges and tsunamis along coastal areas and possible landslides in upland areas. This was made possible through a program implemented by the Philippine Business for Social Progress funded by the World Bank. During Yolanda, the provincial disaster authorities sent a steady stream of alerts and helped minimize casualties in the calamity-prone province. The second innovative disaster alert service I want to share with you is a mobile phone application called Tudlo, which means to point or to teach in Cebuano language. Running on both iOS and Android operating systems, the app can alert users if there is a flood, fire, typhoon, an act of terrorism, car or, car or plane accidents, or even a pandemic alert in their vicinity. Working with Albay Provincial Government, Tudlo's developers have customized the mobile app to address the specific needs of the province. This includes geotagging messages sent in by users so that these incident reports can be located on a digital map. A customized version has also been developed for National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council called Batingao, which means warning bell in Filipino. Based on the experience of Albay and Southern Leyte, Services like InfoBoard and Tudlo are effective when these are embedded in a well-designed and implemented disaster preparedness program. That is why we at PLDT and SMART are working with other corporate organizations like the Petron Foundation and ProLife UK to help the other provinces like Cebu and Bohol to develop comprehensive disaster preparedness plans like Albay and Southern Leyte. And then we install services like InfoBoard and Tudlo in these disaster preparedness programs. What's the lesson here? Well, technology can be really cool, but in the end, it's people and organization that make the real difference. The really powerful innovation is embedding technology in preparedness organizations and getting people to use them creatively and consistently. Thank you for your interest and may we all have a productive conference. Thank you, Mr. Nazareno. Um, we were talking about targets. Our target is to conclude by 1.30. So I would request the last four um, speakers uh, to render and give five minutes of presentation um, each. There will be no intervention in between, so the flow will be Ambassador Toshinao Urabe to speak on disaster risk reduction in Japan, the Great East Japan earthquake in 2011 followed by Ambassador Evo Sieber to talk about international humanitarian assistance and its challenges. Third will be 
Ms. Luisa Carvalho, representative of